Often in a first pass on a mineral property, geologists and explorationists see something that's so exciting and interesting that they are compelled to come back and take a second look. Hi, George Sanders, President, Gold Cliff Resource Corporation. Today is Tuesday, November 11th, 2025, and we are back at the Kettle Valley Gold Silver Epithermal Project near Rock Creek, British Columbia. Our most recent video was recorded here just last Wednesday, less than one week ago, and the program that we had for drill infrastructure preparation and a little bit of sampling and prospecting wrapped up on Thursday afternoon, just a few short days ago. Over the weekend, the samples that were collected from here, and if you're watching this for the first time, there is a link to last week's video in the description, so you can catch up on that. Uh, the samples that were collected in the field were cleaned up and diamond sawed. And so once that happened, we were able to take a more detailed look at them and in some cases look at them under the microscope. We were so encouraged by what we saw in a number of those samples that we had to come back here while we had a weather window and do some additional prospecting in the north. So what we're going to do in this video is show you some photos of some of the samples that were collected last week and then we are going to take you on a bit of a real-time prospecting. So what has us so encouraged? Well, what we're seeing is alteration, composition, texture, and mineralization in the samples that are typical of what you would find in a uh, high-quality gold silver epithermal deposit. So very encouraging, very compelling, and we're coming back to see if we can get some more. So we'll show you what some of those samples look like, and then join us for real-time prospecting as we head uh, just in front of me. We're going to head down that slope and keep going to the north till um, uh, to, to see how far this mineralization and alteration continues. So in our last video, we showed pictures of this material and here we are with a video. We're headed south-southwest. This strikes about 170 degrees. So I'll move along and I'll orient the camera uh, to the drill trail just to give a view of the color anomaly. So we're proceeding more or less on strike 170 degrees and we can see we've sampled here and pictures from here were shown in the last video. Looking back a bit I won't uh, travel through the bush. I will stay on the trail but at the lip at the end of this trail, we just curve off a little bit to the east or to my right, and we'll come around to the outcrop that we sampled and you saw in the last video. And that little lip we saw, we just came down the road, and here we are at the outcrop in the northern drill pad and I'm going to slowly walk in and focus on this sheared zone. We have some really interesting samples from there as we do from this sheared zone. I've turned around now with those shear zones to my back and walking forward just over the hill 
I'll zoom in on those flags. And that is the location of the 0.59 gram sample. So we're now prospecting down slope. There's the, uh, the blue and uh, orange ribbon is the 0.59 gram sample. Uh, just at the crest is the northernmost drill pad where the outcrop was. So I'm going to pan around here so that you can get an indication of this gully on the east side. We'll come around here and a gully on the west side. And we know that the ridge we're standing on is uh, laden with quartz, so resistant. So now we're prospecting downhill. And the thing that I like to see is not just the rusty rock, but what cuts the rusty rock. And here you see numerous little fractures filled with quartz, quartz and calcite. And the more of these we see, the better chances are for getting decent grade. We're down slope now, as you can see from the drill pad way up there at the crest. Um, in distance, we're just under 40 meters further to the north uh, and continuing to find new material that looks similar and also very interesting to us. What are you seeing there, Warner? So these rocks that have come out of outcrop here show exceptionally good textures. Lots of veining. What's intriguing is the veins cross each other. Here's an open space filling, all lined with quartz crystals. Just a lot of silicification all through the rock. Very nice. So just a few meters away from the last sample, here we go again with even more intense quartz calcite veining all through here. Very, very good textures and the ideal environment for precious metal mineralization. So quite a ways down slope from the northern drill pad. We are looking north. I'm going to swing around to the east. We can see that gully going up there. I'll come back around to the west. And we can see that obvious gully. We're going to look up slope now. And at the daylight way up there is where the northern drill pad is. So quite a range. From there, I'm going to come back around and just move over to this uh, western cliff boundary so that you can get a good view of it. There, right there. We'll just zoom in a little bit. Zoom back out. Even down here, there is abundant uh, silicification and quartz veining going on in the rocks. So this ridge is highly prospective. Again, a view looking up towards the north drill pad, but I'm now on the east side and as I pan down here, you can see that there are some cliffs and you can clearly see the gully, the fault that's bounding this considerable wedge of highly silicified and quartz veined material. So there you go. Uh, just some clips of prospecting in real time as I'm recording this. Uh, those clips were recorded uh, about an hour ago as we made our way uh, down the hill. The, the uh, horizontal distance 
that we looked at, even though we were going down slope, was about 200 meters of strike from south to north. And you could see in some of those clips I was pointing out gullies on both the east and west. So kind of bounding this wedge uh, of, uh, of silicified material, which made it erosion resistant when glaciers were through here and the gullies are fault zones. And I can also tell you that the entire length we were finding quartz veining, silicification, some sulfides in places. Uh, the other thing that we were finding is that was consistent from the west side to my left over to the east or uh, uh, my right side, those, those two gullies uh, coming down slope. So we prospected this in a uh, 200 meter strike length. It's open to the north, it's open to the south, and four, five, I don't know, 600 meters further along uh, that you saw in the last video uh, is the area uh, where another drill pad was con uh, constructed for testing the area of our very best surface samples. So, we have a high level of enthusiasm. Uh, these rocks will be uh, also diamond sawed, uh, cut, producing the flat surface. This suite will be packaged with the rocks from last week and they will all be shipped to the lab very shortly. We don't control lab turnaround these days. They are busy as all the summer and fall programs are wrapping up. We would hope to have results uh, before Christmas, but very likely uh, into mid-January. Uh, that's a bit of a wait and we're going to be on pins and needles because some of these samples are really have us excited. Uh, having said that, exploration is a marathon, it's not a sprint, and so we're, uh, we're prepared. In the meantime, we have the infrastructure in place for drilling next spring. We have most of the financing in place to do that work for next spring, and we still have some room there to put all the funds in place and be ready to go as soon as weather conditions permit. And uh, we're very excited about this particular asset in the portfolio. Uh, so best I can say is stay tuned.